Welcome to the Maverick Psychology Corner. Today it is familiarity bias. As always, make sure that you put these pieces in your trading plan. So a little background behind familiarity bias. This is the concept. It again, comes from cognitive psychology and is a behavioral finance topic. Traders tend to favor what they know. So if the company is, is in your country, certainly in your area, you know, imagine um, that you worked at that place. You might feel a familiarity to it. You feel like you own and know that business inside and out. That can create some of its own problems. It could be a positive to develop familiarity with stocks, right? Kind of know their behaviors, know their normal risk and, and reward and volatility, kind of get familiar with what's normal so you know when it's, when it's acting abnormally. But there are risks to too much familiarity, um, you know, kind of biases and whatnot. So familiarity bias, what are some of the risks? Well, the first and most common is this is a blue chip stock. You'll hear that where it's like, hey, this company, this is, you know, it's been around for my lifetime. Um, I could envision a scenario where, who knows, maybe Coca-Cola one day is just falling apart, falling to pieces. I don't know why, but they stopped buying Coke. Now, that probably won't happen. And my wife drinks Diet Coke, and I don't see her changing that habit anytime soon. But anyway, um, you know, maybe there's an environment. Well, this is a blue chip stock. You know, this is a big name. This is a, a great name. This was one of the most common uh, scenarios for why people really get hurt with big, well-known companies falling is you'll see a lot of people buying them. If you were to just think about like, you know, traders and investors, there's a, they like the familiar. They don't like the unfamiliar. And in trading and investing, it's kind of like a company that's been around for forever. Well, it might have legacy problems, you know, GE, well, they might have to pay pensions and all these sorts of problems. Whereas a new company that can compete with them may not have all those long-term problems. It might be beneficial to not have some, you know, blue chip status and not have some great name that way. It, there might be a benefit to being a newer company, you know, in, in some capacity. So we give far too much credit for prior successes. And we're also way too negative towards prior failures. In many ways, the news and you know opinion pieces and so on create our biases because we just become too familiar with something to where we think that it's good or bad, right? Um, we, we have this certain experience with it. And so in the financial crisis of 07, 08, a lot of people were buying the things that were going down the hardest. It was like, you know, all the financial Citigroup was just falling apart, but everyone wanted to, own. Citigroup was like the biggest bank out there. Well, Citigroup ended up losing and by the way, has not recovered. If you do, if you do their reverse stock split, it's like Citigroup still in its crisis mode. It's so far off of its all time highs. I don't know if it'll ever get there ever again, but people wanted to buy the Citigroups of the world because they were so well known. Whereas companies that weren't as well known, but were still financial companies, you know, Visa and MasterCard, they might seem like blue chip well known. Visa had only IPO'd a couple of years before the crisis. I think Visa's IPO was maybe in like 05, 06, and then the crisis hit 07. It didn't have all the legacy problems. Visa's stock was so much better than Citigroup, both in the decline, it didn't fall as much. And in the recovery, it re rebounded way more. But there just wasn't the familiarity. Both were in financials, but people become attracted to what's most familiar. And oh, by the way, it's like the harder it falls, the more attracted they become, right? Because they think it's discounted, where in reality, these might be, you know, wounds that may not ever heal and recover. Um, so if you bought Lehman and Bear Stearns, of course, those companies bankrupted. If you, there was all sorts of them, Washington Mutual or whatever, there were all these companies that went under and these were well-known big blue chip stocks. 
General Motors went through a bankruptcy. That was the largest automaker in the world, and it all it wiped out every shareholder. So believe you me, you can't just hang your hat on that familiarity. There has to be more to it than that. Just understand people tend to favor companies and, you know, within their country, within their states, things that they're familiar with. If they have a famous name, they expect a return to the glory years. Or if they have gone through some sort of crisis, a lot of times people will stay pessimistic even when the crisis is well behind them. You know, I would think about uh, Apple, for example. Apple seems obvious now. Well, Steve Jobs was kicked out of Apple, and Apple almost went bankrupt. You know, Microsoft basically bailed them out. Well, if you if you stayed with that bias that Apple was bad and, you know, it kind of was a cheap, comp- bad company, could never figure it out, well, it's now the biggest company in the world, right? So things can change, and they can change in a big way. What once was great doesn't have to stay that way, and what once was poorly run can be fantastic. So uh, hopefully that gives you some insight into familiarity bias. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.